we discussed the idea of object deserialization and how objects that are sent from the client side to the server side could be manipulated in a way that we would be able to change some properties of it in a way that are advantageous to us since the server wasn't going to verify our client information. Now, with XXE-based vulnerabilities, we're doing something relatively similar to that. In this instance, we're sending data to the server in the format of an XML-based document or XML-based data. Inside of XML, there is this concept of an external entity. And the idea of it is it's basically a variable that points to something outside of the application and asks to load that resource in and give us that data. So in general, we could take advantage of this sort of exploit um, to send XML that has an external entity in it that points to a file that we want to try to access. In our case, we're going to again go for the etc password file just because it's a file that we know is going to be there on a Linux server, so it's nice and easy to target. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up the lab here. And inside of the lab, you'll notice when we go into products, we can check the stock of each of the products that exist. So we can go ahead and check the stock and it will tell us about them. And, you know, generally as a curious person, I'd be interested to know, well, how did they implement that? Go ahead and turn on our proxy and let's take a look and see. When I send a check stock request, what you'll notice is that it sends XML data. So this is of course very interesting to us because we can manipulate this XML data in any way that we'd like. So let's go ahead and send this to the repeater because obviously it's gonna be something of interest and we'll turn off our intercept and go ahead and get to work with this. So when I send this request, it returns back the information based on the product ID and the store ID. If I change one of these IDs, it will give me the corresponding information related to it. So we know that in general, if I manipulate this XML document, I can get it to display information based on the product ID and store ID that I am representing. And in general, since this is an XML format, we can go ahead and assume that it's parsing this as XML data. So it's actually probably using an XML parser in the back end to um, parse this and interpret it. So knowing this, let's go ahead and try to add an external entity. The way that we do this is at the top, essentially, just underneath like the general XML declaration, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in the following. We'll put in doc type, and I'm going to call this um, test. And then what we'll do is we'll declare an entity. We're going to declare an entity. It's going to be called XXE. That's going to be the name that I'm going to give it. And it's going to be system data. And the system data I'm looking for is going to be a file. I put three backslashes because we have to escape the backslash character since that's a special character in XML. We add three instead of two. And then um, what we're going to do is we're going to give the path to what we're looking for. So in general, you could say etc slash password, right? And then of course we will close the braces that we have. So that will close off all of the brackets. And then what we need to do is we need to actually load this external entity. And the way that we do this is we replace one of these IDs with it. So I'm gonna replace the ID two with ampersand XXE semicolon. Generally, you just wanna make sure that this name here matches this name here. The ampersand tells XML that this is an external entity and then the semicolon just terminates the line. So this is how we load it. What will happen is it will load the product ID as this external entity, which is this file here. And in general, what will happen is it will say, well, that product ID doesn't exist. And it will say no product ID found and then leak the information contained inside of this file. Now, if I try to send this request right now, what you'll see is we'll get the following. We'll get all of the information that is stored inside of the password file. So as you can see, we're able to inject data into this XML based format utilizing Burp Suite. So we can generally manipulate this to be able to do as we would like with it. And you can see generally it just says invalid product ID and then leaks all of the information from the file because the product ID that I inputted was that external entity. So I inputted all of this information as the product ID. Since that product doesn't exist, it just says, oh, that product ID doesn't exist and then leaks it all to us. So this should be the general idea of XXE based vulnerabilities. There's a lot of different variants of this that exist and you'll be able to take a look at those through the labs. And I, I encourage you to try practicing with them now that you understand the general idea and how to manipulate them through Burp Suite. 
these types of vulnerabilities are very common in anything that parses XML data. So if you can ever submit XML data or something formatted like that, like SVG files, for instance, um, oftentimes you might be able to get these sort of external entities present. So this is a very nice sort of exploit to try out and be able to see if you can actually leak data like this.